Great, thank you. Another week, another great opportunity. Uh, second time in our career here at Missouri to host the number one team in the country. But the first time, the first game of, of our career versus Alabama. Obviously, Georgia is a very good football team. They're well coached. They've got uh, a lot of really good football players. You know, offensively, they got a quarterback that's playing as well as anybody in the country uh, with Stetson Bennett. Um, he's got a, a tremendous uh, use of resources with the tight end room. There's a lot made about uh, those guys being so deep with that position. They're very deep at running back, also at wide receiver. Uh, at the O-line, they're very physical up front. They're able to run the ball, attack edges, and then use play action shots vertically down the field. Obviously, defensively, uh, you know, they lost a lot of guys from last year, but you wouldn't know it by the production and the way their defense plays. Obviously, Coach uh, Smart's DNA and, and, and fingerprint is all over that defense, but they've transitioned to a new defensive coordinator with Glenn Schumann, uh, who does a, a really good job. And I know he's got a co-coordinator with uh, Coach Muschamp. And so on the defensive side of the ball, they're very good. Their, their front uh, four is, is, is big and physical, does a great job of uh, creating um, disruption at the line of scrimmage, getting the offensive line on different levels. Uh, and creating havoc for the defensive side of the ball. Uh, their back end is very productive. I think Chris Smith, uh, obviously the senior safety, combined with a true freshman, has that veteran presence and, and young guy. Um, uh, obviously, the corner position is very good. Uh, you know, and then special teams last week, they blocked a punt. Uh, obviously, we had uh, that issue with us last year. And so, going to have to play very well in all three phases. Going to need to have a great crowd. Uh, Going to need the best home field advantage in college football. Uh, look forward to getting our fans out here and supporting uh, our program and, and being uh, loud and proud. Really would love for our student section to be as loud and as awesome as they were versus Louisiana Tech. What a great atmosphere that was and, and a great uh, way to put on uh, display what the University of Missouri football program is all about. I've got a few updates from Saturday uh, from the game. Um, you know, that, that are not good. Um, Zeke Powell suffered a season-ending injury uh, in that second drive of the game, and, and uh, this is his last year of eligibility, so um, he will not be able to participate uh, anymore for Mizzou football. And that's a tough one for us to lose. Uh, you know, Zeke Powell was a young man who came in here from a junior college uh, right at the start of the, the 2020 season, um, played well his first year, you know, last year competed, didn't get to play as much as he would like, but came back, uh, did everything that we asked him to do. He's going to get his degree. Uh, really proud of him for that and the growth and maturity that he has shown uh, and just hate it for him. Uh, football's not fair sometimes, uh, as we learned a lot Saturday. Um, and there's, uh, you know, it, it's hard. Um, but he's a tough young man, and we're going to be here for him. And uh, we're chasing two dreams. And uh, we're definitely going to make sure that that life outside of the game is taken care of, and he's well taken care of for us. Chad Bailey will be questionable for Saturday. Obviously, he was not able to finish the game was in a harness. Um, he'll be questionable. We'll see how the week goes um, and continue to work on treatment for him. Luther Burden will be questionable for Saturday um, as he suffered an injury in the second uh, series of the game that kept him out most of the second quarter. Um, really proud of the toughness he showed in the third and fourth quarter, trying to give it a go and doing what he could for our team. Uh, in fact, he was not supposed to do anything but fair catch the punts. Um, but in that uh, uh, fourth quarter, trying to provide a spark, uh, decided to, to, to return that one. Um, but our, our priority is getting him healthy and doing the very best we can for him. Um, so look forward to you know working with him all week to try to get him back. Um, uh, and, and so. Uh, that, that's the update as far as the health status of our team. And I don't, really don't think there's anything else roster injury-wise. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Eli, I know it's, it's only two kicks, but if you, did, have you spotted anything, whether mechanics, confidence-wise, that's any different with Harrison than, than the last week or two? OK, yeah, ACU game. Um, no, I haven't spotted anything. Um, we're, we're looking, you know, obviously we've got Coach Link who does a really good job with our kickers and, and uh, Harrison has his own kicking coach. Um, you know, he gets one shot at it. You know, I've stood over many a three-foot putt and yanked him. So 
Uh, I have 100% confidence in Harrison Mevis. Um, that young man hit a game winner, 37 yard field goal versus Arkansas in 2020. He had a 54 yarder versus Boston College to tie it up and send it to overtime. Um, he's got the career record for, for 50 yard field goals. And uh, one, one play is never going to define any one individual. And uh, so we've got our confidence in him. Uh, and I hate that, that it uh, gets brought up so much because it means so much to this young man. And, uh, you know, he is uh, disappointed. But like I told him and like I would tell the team, um, one play is not going to define him. And the next time he hits a game winner, I'm going to have a, a smile on my face knowing that we were a part of that growth that allowed him to do that. We move on. Yeah, we move on. We, we get back on the horse. Uh, I mean, kickers are people too. So uh, they're just, they're people. Uh, we're all human, right? Um, to err is human, to forgive is divine, right? So we, we all had an error. Uh, and I, I personally don't blame uh, any one player on our football team for Saturday's performance. I blame myself. And uh, at the end of the day, it was my job to get us one more play to win that game. So it has nothing to do with them. The last play of the game, Nate was clearly trying to make a play. But what's is there a teaching point that you make that you show everybody on ball security there? Um, we have a point of emphasis within our program, um, and we actually do a presentation on it, and we will continue to do a presentation on it that uh, you never extend the ball at the goal line except on fourth down. Um, it's just. The risk is not worth the reward. There's multiple clips of uh, players doing it at all levels. Um, and I understand the, the urgency or, or the, the want to make a play, but you have to understand that the risk is not worth the reward. I've got to make a continue to make a bigger emphasis of that and continue to coach it. Um, but that is something that we, pro, you know, we coach in our program. Uh, and uh, just wasn't emphasized enough by me, and, and I've got to do a better job. Speaking of helping a kid get past it, I mean, obviously, it, Nate was, was upset. I mean, how has he, have you talked to him in the last couple of days, and ha, how is he handling just moving past that? Yeah, I mean, I talked to him right after the game, um, and I've talked to him every day since then, and we're going to give him the ball again. We're going to give him the ball again. and. That's what we're going to do, and um, that's what we're going to do. There's, there's really uh, no more to say about it. Like, it, may, it was a mistake. We all learn from it. We all grow from it, and we move on. Um, to err is human. I don't think there's anybody in here that doesn't have something in their past that they wish they could do different. You can't. All you can do is learn from it, and those things don't have to define you. They can help shape you and mold you to the person that you want to become. And as a football coach, um, my job is to win football games, but also to help young men develop into their full potential. And that's what we're going to do. Coach, what are some of the positives you can take off this game? You got letting yards, third down conversion, tackles for loss, a lot of things. What can you, you know, take positively from that game, even though it's not the result you wanted? Yeah, the number one thing I take away from that game is the fight that our team demonstrated after that second touchdown. Um, we, we preached all week, start fast, and we did not. We did the exact opposite of that. But our team ran to the fight. Our defense went out there and held them to 1.8 yards rushing and never flinched. Our offense went back-to-back -back drives in the second quarter, scored a touchdown. Our offense laid an egg in the third quarter. Our defense never complained. They never uh, – uh, pointed fingers. They were encouraging us the whole time. They knew we were going to put ourselves in a position. On fourth and one, they stuffed them. Our offense went out the field. We all had confidence we were going to go down. We answered the bell. We, it didn't work out for us at the end of regulation. Everybody could have hang, hung their head. No, we went out there and we stuffed them. We stuffed them. Jump off sides. Could have hung our heads again. No. Offense went back out there and put themselves in a position to get it done. Didn't get it done. Got to learn to finish. And there's no moral victories. I'm not into moral victories, okay? But I am proud of the way that our guys fought and answered the bell. And that's something that you can build off of. What was working for the offense on those two drives where you guys have 14 points and 
we were ahead of the chains on first down. Uh, if you look at it again, the first four drives of the second quarter, of the third quarter, fourth quarter, we started with negative yardage plays. Whether that was a um, sack on first down, um, a penalty on first down, a uh, we, a bootleg that was a sack on on first down, or we had a, um, a penetration on the outside zone to the left to start the fourth quarter. So those things, you know, when we're behind the chains, it's really a struggle for us. So we got to do a better job of staying ahead of the chains on first down. A lot of uh, formations, A, with two backs on the field, and also a lot of times you had six linemen with Armand out there. What would you like about what you saw from, from those adjustments this week? Yeah, really proud of Armand, because uh, going into the game, the sixth offensive lineman was going to be Zeke and Woody, and Armand was the backup. And, and after the second uh, play of the game, or off, after the second series, Armand became that sixth offensive lineman. And, and really, I thought, competed very well. and, and the moment wasn't too big for him and, and was prepared for his opportunity and really proud of him for that. Um, you know, I thought we were uh, efficient moving the ball. I thought we were able to get what we call dirty runs, which are just move the chain, uh, you know, move the ball forward. Uh, we had a couple that could have busted out there a little bit more, but, uh, you know, we had one uh, penalty that was, um, anyway, anyway, we had a penalty. Um, you know, but I, I liked the change up. I thought it gave us some more air. Uh, to run the football and in a different look that we hadn't shown before. What is uh, Doc McLovin doing to continue to improve? And is he becoming the leader of that group? I mean, special player, special talent. I think we all knew that. I thought uh, we saw a preview of that in the spring uh, football game. Um, have known all along that uh, we were very fortunate to get Dominic on our football team. Um, and really just proud of the maturity and growth that he's shown. Uh, you know, I've set up here a lot. Last year, I felt like I tried to do too much too soon with him, uh, moved him around too much, and didn't really let him develop and settle in. We got to remember that these young men are 18 years old, and uh, the jump from high school to college is a little bit more than what people expect. And so, you have to learn to, to rely on techniques and fundamentals. Um, and we put him in his position that he's a great fit. I mean, he's a great fit in our offense at the slot. Uh, he, he's got dynamic speed, which gets on, in on safeties and nickels. Um, and so I think it's, it's allowed him, one, to grow and mature, to develop as a route runner. And, you know, it's, it took us a little bit uh, with Brady and him to get on the same page. But I think that connection is pretty good right now. And he's, he's leading the league in, in receiving it. Yeah. Can you point to that as an example of, hey, this doesn't always happen overnight, right away for, for some guys. I don't know what in the world you could be referring to. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, again, I think um, you got to trust the process. There is a process to being great. And just because you have the ability doesn't mean it just is going to happen overnight. And so let's let people grow. Let's not put undue expectations on people. Let's let people grow. 18-year-old people still have maturing to do and growth to do and learning. And uh, let's just celebrate what they're doing that's really good. And we'll, we'll, we'll continue to build. Um, but with Dominic Lovett, again, I screwed that up last year. And so I learned from my mistakes. Eli, what does that, that process look like, getting an 18-year-old ready for, for the college reps? And then when do you as coaches know that they're ready in the case of like Arnold Mepo and, and Dominic Lovett? Well, I think uh, the, just the course of development that, that they show and the confidence in uh, not trying to put too much on them too soon, not trying to put them in a position where failure, you know, anything that, that they, anything that happens is deemed as a failure. You know, and, and I think that's the biggest thing. You got to build confidence in your players. And, and um, you know, there is a lot of pressure on people to perform. And whether it's created through social media or through whatever forms, there's a lot of pressure. And, um, you know, pressure is a hard thing to deal with it. I thought there was a really good article about, um, golly, uh, our, the defensive end from Alabama. You know, working through his feelings of pressure to perform uh, and get as many sacks as he did last year and understanding he had to clear his head space and make sure that he was doing, you know, not pressing. Um, and I think you've seen it. 
I mean, we can talk about it throughout the course of history through sports about players who press and, and felt that pressure. And so we're trying to alleviate the pressure, um, you know, alleviate performance anxiety. Um, and I think the way you do that is allow people to play free and confident because they know um, their plays and then they know the fundamentals and techniques that they need to do um, in order to execute. Yeah, so, you know, Jack got his opportunity against uh, ACU, and, and I think he's a great example of somebody who embraced his role, put the team first, was very disappointed that he wasn't named the starter coming out of uh, fall camp, but didn't hide his head, didn't hang his head, just kept working, showed up every day, uh, didn't pout, just kept working, was absolutely gut punched and devastated because um, you work so hard, but you don't get that reward immediately. And sometimes in life, you just got to keep plugging away. You got to keep showing up even when you don't want to. And uh, he did that, and he got his opportunity, and he's been he's been really good. We got to make sure we don't outkick our coverage, um, you know. And so we got to continue to work on some things. But uh, yeah, I thought Saturday had a, had a really good day. Does he? Uh, I think it's his cousin who comes to the Titans. Do you know if he if they communicate? I haven't uh, I haven't dug into that. Yeah, um, obviously, I think, you know, to get that opportunity to play in that style of game that's going to be a physical game against those running backs, against that quarterback and, and the quarterback run game that they had, you know, there were several really big plays where his fits were key um, and he made some great tackles. Um, obviously, uh, we, we got very fortunate on one of the coverage things that he had. Um, but he, he's continued to grow and learn. That's a kid who's, who's really worked hard to be in the situation that he's in. Um, and his opportunity was called, and he was answered upon. And, and you know, that, that room um, is, is battling a little bit of injury right now. Obviously, we lost Chuck early and, and now uh, Chad for a little bit. So, you know, we're going to need older veteran guys like Devin Nicholson and Will Norris and Zach Lovett to really continue to come on. You know, can you take us through a little bit of uh, Mitchell Walters? Kind of, I, if I remember, it was preseason last year. I, I think he, he injured his leg and just kind of his pat back to where he is now. Yeah, um, you know, Mitch is a is a young man that we recruited out of. Uh, well, was already committed when I got here and re-recruited, -re um, and was always a guy that uh, had great size and strength, and just continued needs to continue to develop. It means a lot to him. Um, I thought last season he was an absolute monster on the scout team and would give great reps every single day and, and worked really hard. Um, he actually started at right guard the first scrimmage of the season this year and, and uh, had shown a lot of improvement, um, but wasn't quite as consistent as we needed him to be and, and um, just felt like he had earned his opportunity um, to, to get a chance to play and use his size. And so that's kind of what went into it. Really proud of him. He's got a long way to go, as we all do. Um, but now, you know, with Zeke's injury out and Woody sliding over to the right tackle with, with Armand, um, you know, Mitch is going to have an opportunity to really establish himself as that guard. His size traditionally might might be a tackle. Is he a guy that can, can kind of play multiple places if you need him to? Um, you know, we, we played him at tackle a little bit, but we just feel like with his size and, and, and thickness that guard is probably more his position um, without getting into his deficiencies. I think that's just something that we feel more confident about. How do you feel like Connor played when he was moved over to right tackle after Zeke's injury? Yeah, you know, Connor's actually played quite a bit of tackle for us when you go back to last year and Hiron getting injured in the Georgia game um, and, and missing the, the – um, uh, next two games, which I, I believe were the South Carolina and Florida game, Woody played both those games at tackle and, and actually played tackle at his previous school. So uh, it's a position he's familiar with, he's really comfortable with, and, and um, so, yeah. Eli, at Georgia, it's, Kirby always has good defenses, but just since hmm. you've been playing them, how have they evolved offensively? Now they're kind of a juggernaut on that side. Yeah, they're pretty good. Um, you know, obviously, uh, Todd Munkins, their offensive coordinator, has got – uh, was a, a, a tremendous head football coach, uh, was an offense coordinator at Oklahoma State first, and then a tremendous head football coach at Southern Miss, decided to get back into the NFL and and uh, uh, coached some really high-powered offenses in the NFL. Um, is a guy that I, I, I think is, is uh, 
really, really knows how to use all of his resources. Um, and I think that's really probably what makes him so difficult as a coordinator is that um, he's got experiences in blended offenses. He knows how to use his quarterbacks in the run game. He knows how to use the tight ends in the pass game. He knows how to use a wide uh, or spread formations. He's got all the passes. He's got all the runs. He's got all the tight end stuff. And so he, he's got a, a, a really big toolbox. And then obviously he's got um, some really talented players. His biggest challenge is keeping everybody happy. Well, I, hopefully y'all get to go to their press conference and ask Glenn and, and Kirby that. Uh, I mean, traditionally they, they are a, uh, a three down movement front, which means they start in odd, but will slide to a four down front. Um, they've added some, some variety in their three down front package. There is some three safety defense, which looks a little bit similar to K-State. Um, there's four, two, five, which is similar to what we do. And then there's some traditional three, four, um, Kirby Smart DNA style defense. And so I, I think when you combine a guy like Coach Schumann, who's been in a lot of really good schemes and learn from Coach uh, Smart, you got Coach Smart and then you got Coach Muschamp, there's just a lot of variety of what they can do on defense combined with their uh, really good players, um, you know, makes them a, a challenge. Speaking of three safeties, uh, there were a few plays where it looked like Dalen was kind of moving back at, at a deep safety. I mean, kind of versatility does, does that give you still to be able to do that even though he's, he's kind of moved to another position? Yeah, Dalen, <clears throat> Dalen is a, a very talented player who, uh, man, I thought he, he, he had some really big plays, some really key tackles, had a had a great pass break up there in the fourth quarter uh, that, that – uh, well, anyway, um, and, and so he provides a lot of versatility, can play safety. And I think Coach Baker's done a tremendous job with our defensive scheme of, of providing a lot of disguise. I think our third down package is very difficult to uh, go against. We've been going against it <laughs> for a while. Um, but it has the ability to pressure, has the ability to drop eight, play three safety, and it, it, it all looks very similar. Um, you know, Elijah was uh, uh, hurt uh, in, in uh, the ACU game, and uh, just it's it's a soft tissue injury, so it's all going to be about how um, that thing comes back. Uh, I, I don't have an update today. Um, we'll see, I, I don't anticipate him practicing today. We'll see what tomorrow brings, um, but no, not really, not not anything definitive. Yeah, um, you know we really we really had anticipation to play him in the game versus Auburn, and uh, just didn't didn't get it done. So I, I say he's really close. Just needs another good week of practice, uh, and just be ready when his number's called. But uh, he, he's close. Anything else for coach? Thanks. Thank you all.